Hoyland is out on the training pitch, so is in contention for the game tomorrow. That must be a delightful feeling for Eric Ten Hag and also for the fans too. Yeah, huge. As, as I said, then it's important that we that we have him there as an option, especially you know with Marcus not being present um, for the trip. So, yeah, real real big positive that he's out there and hopefully he can continue his Champions League form. I mean, hopefully he can because he has scored five Champions League goals for United already this season, becoming our quickest player to reach that mark in the competition. I mean, of a player of that impact that's done it in the gigantic competition that is the Champions League, you want that experience in your side. Well, you need the you, you, you do when you're in a, as a striker and you're in that run of form. You know, you want to continue it. You don't want to miss games. Um, and the Champions League, he seems to have a, a little bit of a. Um, bit of an edge in the, in the Champions League which has been good so yeah fingers crossed he can continue that form tomorrow. It was obviously such a shame that he wasn't available for Everton but as we said before you know there's competition at the side you know you have to raise your standards completely and it's one of them now does that raise the standards as a whole bringing him back in especially off the back of a great performance at Everton now too that he just basically merges in straight away. <clears throat> Well, it's one of them, you know. It's you've, you've almost you've taken Marcus out and he's come in, so he just changes the changes the standard, changes the options. Um, you know, all all of the boys there, you, you'd expect to will have the right mentality for tomorrow. And you know, Rasmus will be chomping at the bit, having missed the weekend and and missed a three goal a three goal win at Everton. I mean, you've got Anthony in the mix there too. I mean, he had to sit out of the game on Merseyside due to injury. I mean. When you have obviously a boost here, you know, we've said how many you know players that we have here, but when they're injured, you know, there's obviously that doubt in your mind. But now to see them back in, you know, that's exactly what Eric wants. Eric wants a headache, doesn't he, when he comes to pick the team? Yeah, of course. That's, you know, you have a squad for a reason. And, you know, he's the manager because he's got to make those, those strong decisions. You don't want to be without your best players. You want to make sure that you've got everybody available and you can, um, at any given moment, whether it's in game or before the game, you can choose from your from your best players so when it comes to that as well you know we have got our captain bruno fernandez i mean he is so passionate about this team passionate about united and the history there too and that's very important going into a huge game <clears throat> it is and i think i think with bruno he's um he's a decent person as well first and foremost i mean the way he conducts himself on and off the pitch sorry you know in the training pitch and um even around this the, the staff and the demands he puts on other people his interview with garnacho was quite you know I, thought I enjoyed that at the weekend when you know he sort of said listen we need we need more from your consistency while everybody's raving about the goal he's saying how good he thinks he is and how he can he can do more so you do need that that's what the experienced players bring in. As a captain, he's got to be pushing standards all the time. I mean, we will be hearing from Eric Ten Hag and Bruno Fernandes at 12 o'clock on MUTV with the press conference ahead of the Galatasaray game here. I mean, you can see them all together as a group now getting ready to train. I mean, does it help? You know, you can see some of the young players here in the mix with it too. You know, we've seen Hugo yesterday being part of it. Is it good that there's this healthy competition here from the youngsters too? Of course, it is. of course there is. I mean, these boys are pushing. They're learning and pushing all at the same time. They're learning what the standard is and they're pushing to be in the team. So it's really important that they, they're amongst it, they feel comfortable, they can express themselves um, and show show what they're all about. That's what, exactly what they're working for. I mean, obviously, Bruno Fernandes there, we spoke about his captain skills, you know, with that leadership that we see, you know, especially when it comes to the penalty. He said that, you know, he thought that Marcus Rashford deserved to have that penalty when obviously Bruno would usually take it. I mean, does that just show what kind of a leader he is? It's teamwork, yeah. He recognised that, you know, Marcus hadn't scored a lot of goals in the Premier League this season and needed, um, he needed the goal more than, more than Bruno did. And I think, yeah, it shows that it's important, it's about the collective and he's prepared to He's prepared to sacrifice um, for the team himself. I mean, you can also see Martial there. Martial had a great goal, and with his goal, it was it was a team goal, wasn't it? I mean, it looked like it just stepped off the training ground. Yeah, it was it was nice, and that's they're the kind of moves that you you want to see from your from your centre forwards, like running down the heart, and then you've got the likes of Bruno, who will always you know has the quality to be able to find you in those positions so yeah it was good i thought his performance was good obviously it was a similar kind of move from when he won the penalty as well 
And that's, you know, as a striker, you've got to be running down the heart, the heart of the defence, the opposition's defence, to have those opportunities. You've got Diogo Delo there as well. He spoke about how proud defensively we were at Everton. And that's something that obviously, when there's some great goals, sometimes you forget about what a great defensive performance it was from this team. I mean, you speak about Cobby, you know, with that, that clearance off the line, it was incredible. Yeah, exactly, and how much, how much it meant. And it has to mean that much to, to keep the ball out of the back of the net. It's as important to keep clean sheets as it is to, to be scoring goals. That's their side That's their side of it, the defenders. Um, and as you can see, you all see the low, you know, sort of high-fiving and happy with um, other defenders when they do, they do good things. He tries to build a bit of a, a rapport at the, you know, between whoever's playing in defence and celebrate that side of the game as well, which when I say that, I mean the clearances off the line or the, um, you know, just the defensive aspects of the game. He always celebrates the little wins that you need as defenders that aren't obvious to everybody else. I mean, you said that, you know, little things about like Delo just, you know, high-fiving his team as soon as something's done. Do you think it means a lot more when, obviously, there is a clearance something? He's making everything feel like that, like a cup final. He's making it feel like everything's on the line. Does it help to bring that pressure into a team during a game? Um, I think it's just the, the importance, it's stressing to your teammate the importance of the, the individual jobs that they're doing. So if you are, if you, you know, as a fullback I mentioned before, stopping crosses, that's a really important part of the game. So if you're stopping crosses or you're stopping a situation where your team's in danger, of course it should be celebrated and he is one that, that you know, always gives you that energy. I mean, obviously we can see them there, they're enjoying every single second you've got. Marcus Rashford there in the in the middle too. I mean, it's one of them, even though he is not within contention for this game as he is suspended, I mean, it just obviously shows, you know, what an impact he has on training. They still want the best of the players, you know, being involved in this session. No, of course. I mean, he, he, has, to, he has to train. It's just, you know, it's one game he's missing, but he's still a huge part of the squad. And, you know, Marcus is... Um, no, he's, he's a standard setter as well. You know, there's no point him not being here and not taking part in training for his for his development and also for the standard of the training. We've also got players like Luke Shaw, obviously. But we spoke about how delighted we were to see him at Everton be involved in the game. And when we say involved in the game, obviously having a great impact too. You know, it's. It's hard to believe he had such a bad injury and took him out for so long and now he's back into it and he's come back into it strong as well and that's a credit to the medical staff here, you know, for how well they've worked and he's with his rehab too. Yeah, and his attitude towards it and his fitness, his fitness levels are, are fantastic. He, he came back at the weekend and didn't look like he'd been out for a while, so that's testament to him and the work he's put in with the fitness staff, as you say, but, you know, his quality and his experience, his maturity were a really important factors in our in our back line and I'm I'm glad that he's back in the mix, especially with us going over to um to Galatasaray tomorrow. I mean we do have to speak about Cobby Maydew with just how mature he is. I mean, what does it mean obviously you know for a player that young to have that much maturity? I mean there's people online saying that this kid is acting like a forty year old with his maturity. I think it's um it's a calmness that you don't always get in young players. You know, a lot of young players have ability, but can't go in and produce it and have the confidence to do it in front of, you know, such seasoned professionals. But he's done it because he backs himself um, and he, he knows he's done the work. So, you know, he's a he's a he's a decent, decent kid um, as a person, as well as a player. And I think he'll I, don't, I just know he's got a bright future. You can see it. And, it, you know, everyone's starting to see glimpses of, glimpses of it. You know, both him and Garnacho were in the, in the Youth Cup winning team um, and huge factors in United winning the Youth Cup a couple of seasons ago. And they just now continue the progression. We speak about progression, you know, as you said, you know, it's quite rare to see a player that young to have that much maturity as well. And how, how much is it needed to have a player of that calm and composure on the pitch at all times? It's massively needed. You know, when um, it's, it's different different things that he does is like obviously the positions he takes up, his body position when he receives the ball, the fact that, you know, we spoke about Mark has been sent off. What he does very well is he gets his frame in, in between the ball and the defender. And that is something that, you know, you, you really need to do. But, you know, you find a lot of young players when they come through aren't quite physically ready or don't know how to use the body against a sort of, you know, a 
a grown 30, 25, 30-year-old 30 man who's been seasoned, uh, but he just handles it all very well. And uh, again, uh, you know, I think he's got a huge, huge future, and I have done for a couple of years. I mean, you've got Eric Ten Hag there. I mean, he did have his touchline ban at Everton, but he did say he probably would have got a better view having that touchline ban, and he looked delighted in the stands, didn't he? Of course, yeah, of course. I mean, we were we were several roles behind where he where he would have been sat, and our view is fantastic. But um, he's just happy that the, that it happened. That, you know, the, the moment happened, and you know that that game ban is out of the way with now. I mean. I think, does it, doesn't it matter even more, you know, as a player when you see your manager that happy when these moments occur? I mean, you've seen obviously, you know, him him still shouting, still celebrating as if he was a fan, you know, in the stands. Yeah, I mean, it does, of course, you want to you wanna do well for your team, which means that, you know, you, manage, you put a smile on your manager's face. Ultimately, you're doing it for, for the team, you're doing it for yourself, and, uh, you know, because you want to impress a manager because you want to be in the team. For the, you know, for the games co coming up as well. So, yeah, if you've got the manager smiling, then you're doing all right. I mean, from this point of view, we can't really see the goalkeepers because they are such a way away over on the other pitches there. But Onana going into this game, do you think he'll be relishing in that pressure as well? You know, we've spoke before about, obviously, when you're a new player transitioning into this team, there is so much history behind it. You know, there's a lot of natural pressure. But now going into it, you know, what does, what does, what does that mean, you know, for Andre Onana? No, I think he's... The same as everybody, you know, the pressure's the pressure is there. You know, you play for this football club and you, you play under pressure at all times. Um and I think it's a shock to some people when he first comes to the club. Um but over you can see that Andre after a fairly indifferent start has now understood where he fits in and his role within the team and from his point of view he's he's producing some really good saves and not just that, making the right choices when the ball's at his feet whether to see it long, whether to, you know, whether to play and entice the opposition and he's making better choices. I mean, I think it's one of them as well that the fans around, you know, we've seen him in those clinical moments, you know, with these penalty saves that, that he's done. I mean, he's great at shot stopping, isn't he? He is. And I should hope so too, because that's what goalkeepers are there for. <laughs> you know, we need, we need him to stop the shots that are coming their way. Um, and, you know, United wouldn't have paid the money for him if they didn't think he had all the qualities needed to to stay in between the sticks in high-level games. I mean, we can see, obviously, all the players here. You know, what are those final feelings, obviously, around this team? You know, now going into this, now you can see the focus just building, the, the little laughs that they had in that, obviously, that first drill, and now just a little bit more calm, and, you know, and just want to get those legs moving. Yeah, just warm up now. You know, it's all about getting warm um, before you go into the more intense, the intense drills, which will be sort of... You know the, the different pa passages of play that they'll be working on, making sure they um, they're working on drills that will expose Galatasaray based on the work they've done in the previous game as well, and just making sure everybody's in tip top and ready to get on that plane. Well, yeah, and obviously you know it is very nearly time to go to Galatasaray. You know some great moments, obviously you know before that game. So now let's obviously just discuss, you know, final thoughts obviously ahead of that then. Danny, you know, before this now, how do you think the game's going to go?